Hi everyone, today we are going to speak about polymerase chain reaction and gel electrophoresis. Polymerase chain reaction is a technique used to make many copies of a specific sequence of DNA. The analogy of a needle in a haystack can be used, where the needle represents the DNA sequence of interest and the haystack represents the genomic environment. The aim of this technique is to generate more needles than the haystack. Gel electrophoresis is a process which is then used to quantify and separate the multiple copies of the sequence. These processes are performed in a simple laboratory setup, composed of a PCR tube, primers, nucleotides, the enzyme tag polymerase, as well as water and buffers. The primer is used to bind to the specific sequence of DNA and indicates where the process of elongation should start from. Nucleotides are added into the tube and are used to build complementary strands. The thermocycler is an automated machine which increases and decreases the temperature during the many cycles of the PCR process. Gel electrophoresis mold is used to separate the primer, the original DNA strand, and the multiple copies of the sequence of interest. Finally, tech polymerase is the enzyme used to build complementary strands. Let's take a closer look into the performance of the process of polymerase chain reaction. A PCR tube is acquired and water is added into the tube. Following that, the buffer and cofactor is added into the same tube. Then the primers are added and finally the nucleotides are added into this tube. This PCR tube, which contains all the components for the performance of PCR, is then placed into a thermocycle. What did you do that for? <laughs> I always tell you to not forget tag polymerase. You don't listen. Oh, I forgot. By the way, you slept like a girl. Tag polymerase is then added in the tube. Now, let us look into the dynamics of our target DNA to be amplified in a thermocycle. Thermocycle is basically a laboratory apparatus, most commonly used to amplify segments of DNA via the polymerase chain reactions, in short, PCR. The target double-stranded DNA is best denatured to single-stranded DNA by heating at high temperatures of about 92 degrees Celsius. Simultaneously, the double-stranded primers are also denatured. In the second step, the temperature is lowered and the primers bind to the complementary region on the single-stranded DNA. The temperature is increased to 72 degrees Celsius. Tag polymerase is isolated from the bacterium called Thermosacorticus, which tolerates high temperatures for a long period of time, and dramatically assembles a new DNA strand in a 5' to 3' direction. Because of its nucleus activity, it decreases the primer at the 3' position. This results in the formation of two double-stranded DNA molecules. Next, the temperature is then increased to 92 degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, the newly formed strands are denatured. The process of denaturation, annealing and elongation is repeated for many cycles. This results in the formation of many copies of our target sequence. In a nutshell, this is what PCR is all about. Hello, this is our section on electrophoresis. Let's look into further details of the process. Nucleic acid electrophoresis is an analytical technique used to separate DNA based on charge and reactivity. The nucleic acids to be analyzed are set up on a gel medium where an electric field induces their migration to a positively charged anode. Due to the sugar phosphate backbone, 
All DNA fragments are negatively charged and are repelled towards the positive side. Separation of these fragments is accomplished by exploiting the mobilities with which different fragments are able to pass through the gel medium. Longer molecules experience more resistance from the gel and travel slowly. Shorter molecules in turn experience relatively less resistance and travel faster through the gel. After some time, the voltage is removed and the gradient of fragmentation is analyzed. The DNA fragments of different lengths are then stained using a fluorescent dye which is specific for DNA, for example, ethidium bromide. This can then be used to isolate and study our multiplied sequence. 